The universe is the mysterious creation of a vast intelligence. The origin of the world and life is beyond human understanding. The Vedas describe how consciousness is transformed into energy and matter. This process of creation and becoming is going on today, right now. This is not a theory or a religious doctrine. With these keys of understanding, you can see it for yourself. Namaste. So with great transcendental pleasure, I welcome you to this new series on the ontology of creation. Now, what is creation exactly in the Vedic viewpoint? It's very different from the Western viewpoint. In Western religion, God said, let there be light and all this, you know. And then it seems like he went on vacation. <laughs> and now science has taken over and says everything's due to chance and all that. Because we don't see the hand of God in that view. But in the Vedic view, it's very different. You know, in the beginning of this uh, channel, way back in the foundation series, we went over the process of becoming. There's a link to the video, which is the process of paticca samupada, or specific causality given by the Buddha. And this process shows the steps one by one of how the world comes into being and also how we come into being because those two processes are not separate. And the problem with Paticca Samuppada is it's not very detailed. It's hard to understand what is going on under the hood or behind the scenes. And especially it's very difficult to uh, use that knowledge to view how creation is ongoing in the present time. I don't think any of our students or viewers have really understood it. So we're going to try again, this time from the Vedic viewpoint. I started some time ago to describe the matrika. The matrika is the matrix of the 51 letters of the Sanskrit alphabet. And I encountered a uh, difficulty with that. And I had to think over it and contemplate for some time until I understood the nature of the difficulty and why I couldn't proceed. And the difficulty is the lack of background, the lack of ontology. <laughs> My friend the peacock next to her. I feed him every day. He's gotten quite friendly. So because of the lack of background, when we start talking about the Vedic process of creation through sound, then it's very difficult to understand. So these few videos will give the background knowledge or the ontology necessary to understand the Vedic creation of process which is going on at every moment. And what is the key to this? Tattva. Okay, what is a tattva? A tattva means a truth or a principle. It means something that is essential to the existence, evolution, and maintenance of the universe. And in Vedic philosophy and Sri Vidya, there are 36 tattvas. So we're going to go through these 36 tattvas. And then in the next video, we can start talking about sound, shabda. The tattvas begin from Parashiva. Parashiva is the transcendent reality, Brahman. And the qualities of this reality are Nishkala, 
without parts, nishkriya, without activity, ashabda, beyond words, and amanasaka, beyond mind. So the transcendent reality is inconceivable. It can't be described. It can't even be perceived. One can experience this reality, but this is the highest stage of self-realization. So in order to approach this highest stage, one needs to go step by step. Therefore, we have to understand how the world came into being and what these steps are in the creation. So beginning from Parashiva, the highest reality, there are five tattvas. Shiva tattva, the power of consciousness or chit. Shakti tattva, the power of bliss, ananda. Sadashiva tattva, the power of will, Icha, Ishwara Tattva, the power of knowledge, Jnana, and Shuddha Vidya Tattva, the power of action, Kriya. Now these five Shaktis, Chit Shakti, Ananda Shakti, Icha Shakti, Jnana Shakti, and Kriya Shakti are non-dual. Try to understand. They are part and parcel of the Shiva Tattva. So because they are in a state of oneness, because there's no differentiation, there's no need for language, no need for sound, no need for uh, alphabet or any other means of communication, because they are all, all these Tattvas are one and they're in full knowledge. So the need for language comes in the next stage of creation. <laughs> Thank you for confirming. <laughs> now, when these tattvas expand from Parashiva, they expand with a certain type of consciousness. The Shiva tattva consciousness is I am. Shakti Tattva is you and I are. This is the beginning of differentiation. Sadashiva Tattva is I am this creation. Ishwara Tattva is this am I. The emphasis shifts from I to this, from God to the creation. And in Shuddha Vidya Tattva, I and this both are. In other words, there is seen an equality between God and the creation. And this is the beginning of ignorance. Huh? Because, well, we'll see later on, vidya means limited knowledge. So while in the prashiva, the knowledge is unlimited, by the time we get down to Shuddha Vidya Tattva, knowledge starts to become limited. This is the beginning of ignorance. So next, from the five non-dual tattvas, Shakti Tattva, remember, she's the beginning of separation, of distinction. She generates five more tattvas. Maya Tattva, the energy of illusion. Kala, temporal limitation. Niyati, spatial limitation. Raja, attachment. Vidya, limited knowledge. And Kala, limited agency. In this context, agency means power. So any being that has limited power is no longer the supreme. So this is all the duality or the creation, the material creation. And these five tattvas are together called kanchuka, which is the same meaning as upadi. They cover 
the original absolute truth and make it seem like it's individual and limited. Parashakti emits five more tattvas. Purusha tattva, the individual soul. Prakriti tattva, the world or nature. Buddhi tattva, intelligence. Ahankar tattva, false ego. And manasa tattva, the mind. So these are all dualistic creations. These are all perceived and experienced as separate from God, separate from the Absolute. So now that these high-level tattvas have all been generated or emanated from Shakti, what comes next is the creation of the senses. The false ego, ahankara tattva, and the mind, manasa tattva, then emit the rest of the tattvas. First, the karmendriyas, that means the senses of action, mouth, legs, hands, anus, and genital. Next, the jnanendriyas, the senses of knowledge. The ears perceive hearing, the eyes perceive sight, the nose perceives smell, the tongue is the sense of taste, and the skin is the organ of touch. And these five are aware of the tanmatras, the sense objects, sound, form, odor, flavor, and sensation, respectively. And these are carried by the five elements, akasha, space, fire, which is plasma, air, which is gas, Water, which is liquid and earth or solid. Notice that these aren't exactly elements in the sense that the Western mind thinks of elements like chemical elements. Rather, these are the five primary states of matter. Solid, liquid, gas, plasma, and empty space. So these are the 36 tattvas that are the basis of the entire creation. And these are emitted or emanated or created from the Supreme by sound vibration. And in the next episode, we'll get into how sound vibration develops or evolves in the same way as these tattvas. And then this will start to explain how duality manifests and turns into the world that we see before us and within us. Because this process of creation is not just a one-time thing. It's not that God creates the world and then walks away. That would be irresponsible. And not only that, Actually, God is the substance of the world. Everything that has being is nothing but Brahman. Uh, when the Buddha says Dhamma, a Dhamma means a thing that has real existence. He's talking about Brahman. But Brahman can be covered. Brahman can be hidden. It can be disguised, not transformed but hidden by upadis. Uh -huh. So this is the state that most of us find ourselves in. We are actually nothing but Brahman. But Brahman is creating the world. And we perceive that as our existence as an individual with a body living in the creation uh, with so many objects. This is called Jagrat or everything that be. So this creation, this process is going on every moment. At the subatomic level, it's going on trillions of times a second. And on the human level, it's going on on a longer time scale. And of course, on the universal level, the process is going on for millions and billions of years. But it's the same process just at different scales. 
So as we go deeper into this, we'll start to understand the process. And the next step is understanding spiritual sound, Shabda Brahman. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. 